Welcome back to the Team to Beat Miami Heat podcast, your one-stop shop for daily Miami Heat content. We're pushing to 2,000 subscribers, so if you guys do enjoy my content, please subscribe to the channel. That would mean a lot to me. So it's time to pod, y'all. For today's episode, I want to talk about Kalel Ware. He was recently on the OG's podcast with UD and Mike Miller, and he was talking to them about his rookie season, and he said he has three specific goals that he's looking to achieve in his first year. And so he wants to showcase and highlight his talent. And we saw that he was one of the standout rookies during the Miami Heat's Summer League Championship run. He um, finished first team Summer League. Um, him and Reed Shepard from the, the Rockets were the only two rookies of the five players selected that were rookies. The rest were second year players. And some of those guys had actual tastes and experience in the NBA, not just the, the G league. So anyway, among some of his lofty goals, which I, I like, I like that he has the confidence um, and he has high expectations, which is good. But one of his goals is be in the rising stars game. So as long as he's healthy, as long as he's actually playing and getting some minutes, hopefully getting like 15 minutes, 20 minutes a game, then of course he's going to be in the Rising Stars game. Like based on his play in the Summer League, he showed that he does belong in the NBA. He has been um, considered one of the best players by ESPN in the draft, essentially. Um, based on his summer league play. So I think being in the rising stars, all-star um, weekend game will be easy for him essentially. Cause again, he's showing that he's one of the top big men in the draft. Um, so far, the second um, lofty goal for him so far um, or for next season will be, he said he wants to um, be in the, uh, the rookie of the year race. And that, that one, you know, again, in my opinion, seems feasible. But again, it depends on how much time he gets. Um, and we know Spo doesn't like playing, you know, young guys often, but he will at times. Of course, he did last season with like Jaime Hawkes. It took a while for him to let Jovic play, but that was a different scenario. He was he was younger um, and he was hurt and the Miami Heat were contenders at the time. And so they didn't need his services. But Anyway, he wants to be in the rookie of the year race, which is possible, but there's a lot of good young talented guards that got got, got drafted in the lottery ahead of him um, that he's going to have to compete with and some of these guys are obviously on bad teams and they're going to get, you know, way more playing time so their stats are going to look a lot better. But if he can get significant playing time, if he can eventually start next to Bam Adebayo, oh man, I could definitely see Kaleware being in the rookie of the year race, but it just again, it really is contingent on how many minutes he gets a game when he gets to crack that rotation. But Spo better play him early on. Like, honestly, he's a talented kid, and we need that size. We need his defense. We need him to learn how to shoot that three so he could spread the floor. We need him to play next to Bam Adebayo. So the last um, goal, number three for him for next season, is be on the all-defensive team. Can you imagine if he can make one of the all-defensive teams? That would be huge. And I love that he has that mindset like Bam Adebayo that he wants to be a good defensive player. He wants to be recognized and rewarded for being a good defensive player. And we know in college, he averaged 1.9 blocks per game. And we saw in the summer league, he was able to play really well defensively as well. Um, so as a seven footer, you know, who has a seven foot nine wingspan, you know, he's going to be hopefully a good rim protector for this Miami Heat team. He needs to put on a little bit more weight and size, as a center in the NBA, which he will get strength playing in the Miami Heat's um, system and obviously working out with the Miami Heat's trainer this offseason and all throughout next year. He's only 19. He's still growing. Like, this guy can still grow. Like, people grow until they're 22 years old. It's like, he can actually grow even in height. So, of course, he can put on some pounds and he will put on some weight, again, with the Miami Heat's weight training staff. But those are some, some lofty goals. I think it's great. Um, I'm hoping he can at least achieve one of the last two. Like, again, I think he's going to be in the Rising Stars game. But again, it's going to be harder for him to be in that Rookie of the Year race. If he can achieve that, that's going to be a great sign for this Miami Heat team 
next season as long as they're healthy with Jimmy Butler in a contract year with Bam at a bio continuing to ascend and grow and then adding um you know Kalel and then adding Palel Larson and some other undrafted guys and then of course you know Jovic and Jaime Hawkes hopefully taking the leap and then Tyler Hero hopefully having another chip on his shoulder um trying to prove the haters wrong and then Terry Rozier getting a full year with this Miami Heat team so we'll see we'll see what happens but going back to Kalel um you know he did talk about um how he wants to improve on his rebounding. So if we look at his summer league stats, he averaged 18 points per game. He averaged um, 8.3 rebounds um, per game. He also averaged one assist and he averaged 1.5 blocks per game, which is not bad. 1.5 blocks is good, but the rebounding, I'm hoping to get that into the double digits. I want it to be a double, di- a, a double, double machine for this Miami Heat team. So Udonis Haslam challenged him too and said, "Hey, I want you to average a rebound every three minutes." And he said, "If you average a rebound every three minutes, that's above, way above average. If you average a rebound every three minutes in a 48 minute game, no one's going to play 48 minutes. But that's about 15 rebounds. That's the mindset. That's the motor you have to have. And so there's been questions about his motor in college, and I think UD obviously." being in the front office, trying to put some fire under this young man's belt. Um, and so Kalel Ware, he's going to take that challenge. You know, he's going to try on both ends, which is great. The The seven-footer, he um, he had five double-doubles um, in the summer league in like six games. So um, that's a good sign, like I said, you know, moving forward. And so I'm excited about the prospect of having him on this Miami Heat team next season. And I think he's going to crack the rotation and I don't know about him starting next to Bam, but he's going to be playing behind Bam. And we're going to finally have, at least at the beginning of the year, a notable center that we can bring off the bench. That's not Deadman. That's not Zeller. That's not Thomas Bryant. Hopefully um, he better not be ahead of Kalel Ware in the um, depth chart. Cause that would be annoying as hell. And we'll see what happens again. Like I said, if he could play next to Bam out of bio and we could move Bam to the, the starting four and then maybe even have Jovic come in at the three play Jimmy at the two man that would be ridiculous that would be a big big team but I doubt that's gonna happen but we'll see let me know what you guys think though about Kalel Ware's three lofty goals do you think he'll achieve any of them or all of them let me know your thoughts thanks for watching guys